In this video, I'm going to explain the new hot topic in cybersecurity, EDR, but more specifically EDR alerts. Ooh, what are they? How do they let us know when something's wrong? Has the EDR become sentient? One of the company's artificial intelligence systems has become a sentient being. <laughs> If you don't understand why an alert was generated, then you stand no chance at determining if an endpoint is safe. If you're not getting any alerts at all, then something could be configured wrong. Who tuned the EDR? Maybe your EDR doesn't have enough triggers or poorly made triggers. What's a trigger? I'm so damn confused. Well, if you want to be the best SOC analyst that you can be, drop out of your computer science degree because I'm about to tell you everything you need to know about EDR. And after this, I can guarantee you you're gonna get that next SOC analyst role, probably. EDR, what is it? Endpoint detection and response. Let's ask my new sponsor, Nat GPT. Nah, I'm just kidding, <laughs> they said no. According to Mr. GPT, this is an EDR alert. An EDR alert is a notification generated by an EDR system. When it detects suspicious activity on a device or network endpoint, the alert typically contains information about the nature of the activity and the specific device or endpoint where it was detected. Depending on the EDR system, the alert may also include recommendations on how to respond to the threat. In our case, it does not. Security teams use EDR alerts to quickly identify and address potential cyber threats, minimizing the risk of security breaches which is our job. All right, so that's what it is, but how does it work? Well, broadly speaking, EDR is made up of a command and control interface, as you can see here in the middle, where all the configurations are done and alerts reside. They have a sensor installed on everything. Does this device touch your network? Sensor. You could work off of the EDR interface, but we have an API integration that sends the important alerts to our alert board, and that's generally what we work off of. And we kind of bounce back and forth with the EDR interface if we need to do a little more deeper dive. So how are the alerts generated? Who configures the rules and the triggers? Well, we do. That's someone's job, at least for now. This portion of the job could get taken care of by AI soon. No, it's not, not yet. Go away. In fact, the email filter that I mentioned in the last video is solely driven by the vendor's machine learning with exceptions put in as needed. But there was a new push on our team to document every single trigger that we have in place. This involves explaining exactly what every trigger does, why does it exist, as in why do we care to be even looking for this trigger in the first place, and most importantly, how do we do remediation on the trigger if it's tripped and it generates an alert. Each sensor is provided with the triggers that we have in place that are stored on the mainframe. That's not what it's actually called, but sounds cooler. Early, our EDR solution has 484 triggers. That's a lot of triggers. And we're gonna be doing documentation for a while. But what's a trigger? This is a trigger. Nice. Triggers are very specific conditions. They're looking for live processes, file hashes, network connections monitored by an event recorder or live process file network registry and DNS event matching on the endpoint. The quote unquote events that it's looking for are found in the trigger. And in our EDR solution, there's live matching as well as options for periodic or on-demand scanning on endpoints. It kind of goes without saying, but having a security tool that isn't processing live data isn't a very good tool. Compromise happens in minutes, not in days. So the faster that you can respond to an alert, the better chances that you're gonna contain a security breach. Here's an example of a trigger. We have a condition that the EDR sensor checks live processes. If a condition is met, it generates an alert. Now, understanding the trigger is the most important part, I feel like, in incident response. As a security analyst who handles incident response, our primary job is to handle the alerts. But creating a trigger comes second. So if I have to spend time digging into documentation or searching why a trigger went off in the first place, then that's time that I could have spent containing the breach in the first place. And that is primarily the reason behind my boss having us do this documentation on every single trigger so that there's immediate knowledge that we can read in just a matter of minutes to fully understand how to identify the malicious compromise and remediate the alert as quickly as possible. So it's a really good learning experience for everybody on the team. Think of a SOC analyst job as fighting fires virtually. If you can get to a fire when it's small, say like a bonfire, then you can just spray it with the yard hose and it's and that's it. You're done. Fire is gone. But if you let that fire spread for even a day, then it turns into a forest fire and that's going to obliterate miles of land or data. It's going to take a bit more than a yard hose to contain. So what are the typical remediation steps for these EDR alerts coming in? Well, endpoint detection and response typically involves the detection of the suspicious or malicious activity. And then once it's generated, the first step in the remediation process is to determine the scope and the nature of the threat. And if you know exactly how the trigger works, it is only gonna be a few minutes before you realize how severe this is. Once the threat has been identified, the next step is to take action to contain the threat and prevent it from spreading. This might involve isolating the affected device from the network, a network quarantine, or potentially quarantining any files. And this does happen automatically in certain EDR solutions or blocking network traffic from 
the source of the threat. Once the threat has been contained, the next step is to perform a thorough investigation to determine the root cause of the issue and identify any additional steps that might be necessary to fully remediate the problem. This might include patching vulnerabilities that were exploited by the attacker, restoring any data that was lost or corrupted, backups. One of my professors in college, whenever he brought up the word backups, he would have to say it like five more times just to really stick it to us. Backups, 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 backups. And it's stuck to me to this day. Or this might mean implementing additional security controls to prevent something like this from happening in the future. Finally, it's important to document the incident and the steps you took to remediate it, aka ticket notes, as well as review any security policies or procedures that are kind of out of date and need tweaking. So again, more documentation. You believe that everything that I just said up till now was provided by ChatGPT, or was it? That's the beauty of AI. You never know when you're talking to a robot. All right, so now you're an expert in EDR. Is that all you need to know about how to become a security analyst? Or is it? Is EDR enough to protect against new attackers? Endpoint Detection and Response is a security technology designed to detect and respond to malicious activity on a computing device. It can be an important part of the organization's security strategy, but it's not a silver bullet, and it should not be relied upon as the sole means of protection against attackers. There are many ways that attackers can attempt to compromise a system or network, and EDR is not capable of protecting against all of them. For example, EDR is not effective against attacks that involve social engineering or phishing. Hmm, ooh, interesting. Didn't I just post a phishing analysis video? Check it out. Where the attacker tricks the user into taking an action that allows them to access the system. And then the rest goes on to say that you need a robust security tool set. So you're gonna need to know a little bit more, but thankfully you've got me to teach you all the different tools that you're gonna need to know. Please subscribe if you wanna see any more of the tools and, and learn along with me. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate everybody commenting and liking. It uh, boosts that YouTube algorithm. But yeah, thanks again. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.